Hello, I have a small delay, so let's get straight to the point. First G2 storm in 2015. Around 12 UTC on 7th January, KP index reached 7 points. What is a sign of strong geomagnetic disturbance? It was caused by an interplanetary shock, which can be clearly seen on ACE magnetic field chart. Orientation of solar wind turned rapidly to the south. BZ reached minus 20 nanoteslas. However, wave which caused this storm is not that obvious on plasma parameters graph. I think that it was a part of frontal density wave of a coronal host stream which arrived day later. Anyway, impact was recorded on bigger part of the globe. It is the first time when I saw that the scale was raised to plus minus 550 nanoteslas on Canadian magnetometers plot. In yellow knife, geomagnetic shock reached 1000 nanoteslas. But in Europe, the disturbances were not that strong. Auroras were visible mostly in Canada and Alaska. But it seems that there was a nice show on the sky over southern hemisphere as well. But let's look how the strong negative BZ affected the magnetosphere. Here we can see a nice example of magnetic reconnection, followed by a small plasma outflow. This kind of reconnection is causing the biggest geomagnetic disturbances. But on the magnetopause position monitor, not everything is so nice. The formation of magnetopause was rather ugly during the time of impact. Anyway, the backside reconnection caused a great inflow of charged particles into the current rings. Hmm, actually it seems that the biggest wave of particles arrived before the reconnection. Interesting things can be seen as well on the radiation belt monitor at 10 kilo electron volts. I've told many times about the backside gusts of neutral particles, which look just like this one. But during the strongest disturbances, we were hit by two such gusts from both sides of magnetotail. I'm not sure if it is connected with the coronal hole stream, but one day before the G2 storm, density of atomic oxygen in the ionosphere started to grow back and behave in more rational way. Main density of particles moved back to the day side of planet. Around the same time, temperature of ionospheric plasma and neutral gas started to grow as well. Now I would like to speak about a monitor which was a subject of my observations for quite a long time. Ionospheric polar cap potential. Sadly, some time ago CCMC decided to modify this simulation and turn this signet into a flashing monster. But in the evening of January 7th, a miracle took place and monitor came back to its natural state.
It seems as well that the second version of this monitor, which shows geomagnetic not geographic coordinates, was working fine for a longer time. Anyway, as I said, I was watching those readings almost from the beginning of my career. And at this time I came to some important conclusion. You need to know that the electric potential of ionosphere is not constant and can change a lot in a short period of time. <laughs> what is probably connected with the changing polarity of IMF. But to the point. I've noticed that the ionospheric potential is directly connected with seismic activity on Earth. According to my observations, there is much less earthquakes when the positive potential is placed over the northern hemisphere, just as on those images. Activity is growing when the situation is opposite, just like here. Now it is a perfect opportunity to check if this correlation is still working after some time. In the evening of January 6 the potentials started to destabilize and finally they switched their locations. Now let's look at the seismic activity during January 6. And now look what happened when the potential started to freak out. Earthquakes started suddenly to pop out. Some of you asked me about my opinion regarding the strange behavior of our magnetopause, which can be seen on SWMF plus RCM monitors. Anomaly is causing an ugly deformation of the line which represents the magnetopause. Most of you saw probably the latest BP movies in which he connects those disturbances with the Large Hadron Collider in CERN. My explanation has nothing to do with human activities. Instead, I've managed to find a nice connection between those deformations and current ring monitors. It seems that disturbance is taking place during the time when rings are being discharged, just like here. I think that the magnetopause anomalies are caused because of reconnection between low energy field and our ionosphere which can be seen nicely here. Awesome. It seems that at last I've made the first step on the way to understand the discharges of current rings. But if you are interested more in the geoengineering than in space weather, I would suggest you to check this monitor, which shows the concentration of nitrogen dioxide in the atmosphere over Europe. In my previous movie I was showing you those disturbances, which can be seen here every day and which don't look like anything what could be caused by any natural process. I want to show it once more, because on 7th January we can see something what wasn't visible before. It seems that on this day there were two separate events which took place one after another. It seems as well that one day earlier the situation was similar, 
with a small difference of time and location. So, there is a clear pattern which allows me to guess that those anomalies which visibly affect the nitrogen dioxide can be caused by impulses emitted from a satellite which is orbiting Earth. However, I still prefer to speak about space weather. No matter how advanced our civilization is, we can't match with the forces which shape the universe. One strong solar eruption can fry our electric grids and cause chaos on global scale. Problem is that the sun has great problems. Strength of heliosphere started to drop. Just like on Earth, or even stronger, magnetic field over southern hemisphere is fading. Latest solar cycle is still not complete. This toy allows us to see the magnetic polarity of our star in 3D. Violet field lines are negative ones, green are positive. Close field lines which connect opposite polarities are white. Orange dot is placed in the middle of Earth facing disk. Right now positive pole of heliosphere is located just below the solar equator. Negative polarity covers the rest of surface. This affects greatly the shape and size of heliosphere. Electromagnetic bubble which surrounds the solar system just as magnetosphere surrounds Earth. And suddenly it starts to be obvious that we shouldn't be afraid of solar activity, but about the forces which shape the environment of interstellar magnetic field. Strength of those forces can vary in different parts of galaxy, which is full of local magnetic clouds, which doesn't seem to be generated by any visible celestial bodies. Because the sun is weak, our planet starts to be affected by different electromagnetic field. I think that there is an external force which is the main cause of all those disturbances. This force is as well responsible for the weakening magnetosphere and plasma outflows. Magnetic forces are invisible. D5 UNCR tells that they are magical. Our science still didn't find anything what would explain the existence of magnetic field lines. And yet, they exist. We know that photons travel through space with the speed of light, biggest known velocity. But how can we measure the speed of a field line if we don't know what are they made of? There is only one way to observe the magnetic fields, by watching how they affect physical, not magical, matter. Just like on those monitors, which show the electric currents in the ionosphere. Left animation shows the concentration of energetic particles in the upper atmosphere. Right one shows the height of F2 layer, or simply how high the particles are. Red color on the left monitor shows the biggest density of ions and electrons. On the right side, red shows the highest altitudes. If a red cloud appears suddenly on the left side, but on the right in the same area we can see dark blue, it means that the ion cloud moved to very low altitudes. Of course, we are dealing here with charged particles, which in the difference to neutral matter are vulnerable to magnetic, magical forces. As I said many times before, magnetic forces are based on polarities. Electric current, stream of energetic particles, can take place only when there are two opposite field lines which connect different electromagnetic fields. On the right monitor, negative field lines directed outward are pulling the ions up. Positive field lines are directed towards Earth and push the particles down. Each time when a red and blue spots appear next to each other on the right monitor, streams of particles goes bye-bye. Of course, at the same time, there is an inflow of particles with opposite electric charge. I didn't tell that magic is simple. Anyway, this is more or less how our atmosphere is being ionized. And this brings us to the point where magic becomes reality. Let's look how magnetic forces shape the air currents on our planet. Last time I was showing you examples of magnetic tentacles on satellite images and some of you asked me about different parts of Earth. Here you are. 
perfect example of a tentacle, which actually is a flux tube, is hovering above northern Atlantic. Smaller tube is placed over Caribbean. Now look where the bigger tentacle is connected to the surface. Would you call it a coincidence? But let's move further. You've noticed probably on the ionosphere maps that the strongest disturbances were taking place over Southern America. Is it somehow connected with the weather patterns in this region? You will have to answer by yourself. However, I can give you a couple hints how to track the ions on the satellite images. It is not that hard, as their temperature is lower than in the case of normal clouds. But what is visible on this image, even the color of ionized particles is different, and differs greatly from other clouds which still remain white. Here we can see nicely how the blue clouds stick to the magnetic field line. But in the South America, ions seem to be released straight from the surface. I would say that those clouds look for me like plumes. Here we can see two field lines which connect the southern part of continent to the polar cap and open magnetospheric field lines. Not all magnetic forces are so obvious. There are two field lines on this image, but only one is visible. Second one can be tracked only by the opposite polarities of air masses. Another invisible field line connected to Central Africa was hovering over a big part of Northern Hemisphere. However, it seems that the connection point changed in last couple hours. To finish this subject nicely, let's look at the equatorial air circulation, or rather the lack of it. Red line shows the equator. Clouds above it should move from right to left. For the end, I would like to speak last time about DSW movie and the strange phenomenon which was recorded on his camera. As you probably know, I explained this anomaly as a result of increased solar radiation and protons which react with the CCD sensor within the camera. As a response, D5 UNCR made this picture, which according to him shows why my explanation is not possible. Problem is that this image has nothing to do with actual situation. That's why I've made my own 3D version, which in the difference to D5 picture is based on actual recording. White sphere with arrow represents the sun, the rest should be easy to understand. As you can see here, tip of the arrow is touching the lens and the middle line doesn't cross the fingers. But let's take a look from the camera. Wow, it has to be magic. From this point of view, the line is placed in front of the small finger. Do you know what kind of magic can it be? Some people call it perspective. Okay, enough of magic for today. Class dismissed. Be safe. Peace.